I'm Tim Sund here at Nonlinear Labs in Berlin. I'm very happy to announce another major firmware update for the C15, which greatly expands its functions and possibilities. Before I introduce some of the new features individually, I'd like to give you a general overview. The amount of modulation targets has been increased from 95 to 185 targets meaning that now we can modulate nearly all parameters. We have extended the ranges of 17 parameters, just to pick out a few. Velocity amounts for envelope times have become bipolar. Some key trackings go up to 200 instead of 100% and unison detune now goes up to 24 instead of 12 semitones. We have new functions. The gate of the feedback mix can be bypassed now and the decay times of envelope C can be controlled by velocity. In envelope C we can run a loop between DK1 and DK2, which makes it behave like an LFO, at the same time being as organic as the rest of the C15. Now single sounds can also make use of a second group of effects. The two effect groups can run not only in parallel but also in serial mode. Parts can be panned and routed separately to the left and right outputs. In split mode, the output signal of one part can be routed into the feedback mixer of the other part. The two physical ribbons can be switched now between two pairs of virtual ribbons. And we have improved the preset search and the graphical UI. OK. Now let's dive into some of the new features. Let's see how they work and how they sound. For example, we can now modulate the envelope C amount of the cutoff. We can also modulate some of the key trackings now. Here I use one of the expression pedals to change the pitch key tracking from a half tone to a quarter tone division. Here's an example of the extended ranges. Now you can move the key tracking up to 200% instead of just 100. And if we change the key tracking of only one oscillator, we can create some nice effect sounds by moving the pedal. Modulating fold and asymmetry in the shaper section creates some really nice change of timbre, almost like a filter without being one. In unison mode, we can now detune up to 24 semitones instead of just 12 semitones. This is where we have been before, and now I go higher.
And now let's go to the new loop function for envelope C. By creating a loop between dk1 and dk2, we get a very flexible LFO kind of effect by manipulating the times of both decays, the breakpoint and the sustain level, we have access to a big variety of waveforms. Let's start with the classic vibrato for expressive leads, where the looped envelope is modulating the pitches of both oscillators. The envelope amount is controlled by aftertouch. Now I go back to the very first sound I showed you, where envelope C modulates the cutoff. If we loop the envelope, we have a really nice filter tremolo. This brass sound is a good example for a polyphonic loop running at different speeds on different keys. Now I come to the new effect features. We can use a complete second effect group for a single sound in parallel as well as in serial mode. Here is a guitar sound with two parallel delays. And now with two serial delays. The serial chaining of the two effect groups is possible in dual mode as well. So far the combination of the flanger and the cabinet was only possible in this exact order. Flanger, cabinet. But now we can take the cabinet of effect group 1 and put it in series with the flanger of effect group 2. Here I use the flangers of both effect groups to create a phaser and a chorus and put them into series. Here I send a delay into a flanger. In this next example, the reverb which I control with the damper pedal is sent into a combination of flanger and cabinet. Now I come to the new panning functions. In dual mode, parts can be panned and routed separately to the left and right outputs. Now I come back to the guitar sound I already used with the two delays. The two delays can also be panned and routed separately to the left and right outputs. In a 
split sound, the output signal from one part can be sent into the feedback mixer of the other part. Here, part 2 is gating part 1. In the next example, the gate is combined with a low pass filter. Here part 2 functions as exciter of the comp filter of part 1. You can compare it with the resonance of piano strings where the keys have been pressed. And last but not least, we made two important improvements for the user interface. We have a new window in the graphical UI for preset search. It allows you to find presets by name, hashtags and color tags and provides a convenient interface to organize your presets. And on the hardware side, the two physical ribbons can be switched between two pairs of virtual ribbons by pressing the function key. The display shows on which pair of ribbons you are in the moment and if there are pedals connected to the same macro. Thanks for watching and have fun trying these new features. We are also still exploring the C15's new possibilities. Watch out for more video content in the near future.